Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we've got four new cards to look at for the Saviors of All Doom expansion. It should be five according to the release schedule from Blizzard, but one of them's kind of missed its time. So not sure what's going on there, but we do have four pretty cool cards to look at. And we're going to start with the latest one, and this one is for Rogue. And it's a Thief Rogue card, Bizarre Mugger. He's a five mana, three attack, five health minion with Rush. Battle Cry, add a random minion from another class to your hand. So this is only specifically targeted at minions, not any sort of card. So I don't know whether that makes it better or worse. Probably worse, because if you're playing a Thief Rogue deck, then spells from other classes can be really powerful. Rogue has preparation and other ways that they want to cast spells, like with Auctioneer, etc., that type of stuff. So being able to have the spells is probably better in the but then of course you can get some pretty good minions from another class it's not just your opponent's class it is in another class but let's look at the card in itself um when you look at this it doesn't look very good initially but a blink fox is a three mana three three that's a very good card and this is basically two mana extra and what are you paying for that two mana you're getting rush and you're getting two health so if you had a spell that was um, two mana give a minion rush and add a random minion from another class to your hand. Would you play it? Um, probably not still, but it's not that far off, I don't think. Um, the problem with it is when you play it on turn five, usually what it rushes into, if your opponent's if you're rushing into your opponent's five drop or even maybe their four drop, you're not going to kill it, which is a bit of a problem. Um, also, five health. Maybe it will still die with five health, and you just don't really get much value out of it. That all kind of depends on what the meta is going to be like. If you're playing Token Druid, for example, this card's good. If you're playing against Token Druid, this card will help you to deal with that kind of a board. Maybe there's lots of smaller reborn minions with lower health that you can kill with this, but then they come back, of course, with reborn. So we'll have to see what the meta is like. Um, I wouldn't say initially that this is better than uh, a Blink Fox, mostly because Blink Fox being three mana. It just gives you that flexibility to play it on other turns. This is five mana, so it's going to take up either your whole turn or a lot of your turn. But if you're in the right type of deck, obviously you want minions. If you're playing Tess Rogue, for example, you want minions from another class because Tess will replay them. So this is a cool card. I like seeing ones like this because I don't like Rogue just being a face deck um, with Leroy Jenkins. It's nice to have um, this kind of card, but to be honest, 90% of rogues are not going to be replacing Leroy Jenkins with this card. That's what I think. Next up, let's take a look at two epic hunter cards and two very interesting hunter cards, in my opinion. And we'll start with the Scarlet Web Weaver. It's a six mana, five attack, five health beast, and it has the battle cry of reduce the cost of a random beast in your hand by five. So it works similarly to the Dream Petal Florist, but this is a battle cry, not an end of turn effect. And I think it can be very strong in Hunter. Um, let's just say if you built your deck properly around this, then you, you should have beasts in your hand to be able to hit. Hunters don't usually have a lot of cards in their hand, so you could have potentially saved the one beast that you want to reduce rather than reducing maybe a one mana or two mana minion. Because I think if you're playing this, you don't want to hit a one or two drop, but you can still run them in your deck. It's not like you'd have to completely cut them out because of this because ultimately this only costs six mana if you've got some smaller beasts in your hand that you don't want to reduce you could even play them first before you play this so i think it's very flexible but there are so many good targets for it and if you do hit a minion that it costs five or more then effectively you're paying one mana for a five five for this because you get the five mana discount and hunter has got a lot of good targets for this i think tundra rhino will be especially good um, Tundra Rhino could be incredible to have a zero mana Tundra Rhino on the board it's very strong um, and even if you got a zero mana Tundra Rhino when you do your Zaldrin turn you could summon a bunch of five fives and all the other beasts that you've got in play and if you've got space on the board you can play that Tundra Rhino and go face on your opponent so that could be a potential OTK combo there with Zaldrin obviously it's quite difficult to control but if you play Unleash the Beast five times or six times, then that's that's 30 damage. You just play Unleashed to be six times somehow, discover it off of a marked shot or something, and then you can play your zero mana Tundra Rhino and then just go into your opponent's face. So that's a real possibility, actually, because I don't think it would be very hard to hit a minion in your hand that you actually want. Um, you just play out your other smaller beasts and then potentially you can hit that Tundra Rhino. But even if you got it on the Savannah High Main, amazing, very good. You could put it on King Crush to get a big discount on King Crush. 
I suppose the discount's only five from King Crush, so King Crush would cost four, which means you can't play him on the same turn as Bran unless you've got the coin, which is unlikely in Hunter that you're going to want to set up this kind of combo just to do 16 damage with two King Crushes. But yeah, you can play two Scarlet Web Weavers, so you could discount the same card twice if you did want to have a zero mana King Crush. It can discount itself because it's Beast. There's lots of really good options with this, and I think that Hunter is going to enjoy this card a lot. And it synergizes with this next card, which is a really interesting card. Not necessarily um, fit for Hunter, I wouldn't say, but um, it will still be good. Uh, it's a 6 mana, 6 attack, 9 health minion. So those stats are very strong for a 6 mana minion. It also has Battle Cry, summon a minion from your opponent's hand and attack it. That's so cool. It's basically like a dirty rat that then attacks your opponent's minion. And because it's got 9 health, it is unlikely to die to whatever it summons. Now, there are ob obvious nightmare scenarios here. Like, if you pull someone's Mechathune, yes, you break their combo, but you do it, give them their Mechathune on the board. So if you haven't got anything to follow up to kill that, they can kill you the next turn, potentially, if they've got enough damage. So, like, Hunters, you know, if you pulled Mechathune from their hand, you think, oh, great, I've broken their combo. But to be honest, Hunters want to kill a, uh, opponents before they even get to the end and doing that sort of combo anyway. But there could be other disrupting factors to this, like a Malagos, for example. Same problem, this wouldn't kill a Malagos. But you might already have minions on the board. You might got mana left over to spend to kill a Malagos yourself outside of the turn. So I think this card can be really good. Um, it can be discounted by the previous card as well. And also you could potentially put um, Dire Frenzy on either of these minions. So Dire Frenzy would be amazing on Scarlet Webweaver because if you then play, you Dire Frenzy them, play Master's Call, get a few of these in your hand, and then they start discounting each other, you can see how you can quickly grow your board quite quickly. And this one as well, Master's Call would be great on this because if you put one Master's Call on this, then it essentially means that when you play it onto the board, it will remove your opponent's card, a card from your opponent's hand and kill it. Um, which can, depending on the matchup, can be really strong. Um, just, it kind of almost discards the card from their hand if you've done something like that. Obviously, you have to take the damage on this and pay six mana for it. But I think in certain situations, it can be very good. It's a bit strange that it's in Hunter because... Um, a lot of control classes would love this. So I think Paladin could love this. I think Priest would love this. There's lots of kind of other decks that would love to have a card like this. But I think it's still cool in Hunter because even if you're playing um, a mid-range Hunter, I think maybe you would want to play this on turn 6 because it just puts stats on the board. Um, now, you do have to take the risk of summoning Tyrion um, from your opponent's hand or something something really big from your opponent's hand. That's always going to be the downside. But Hunter does have a lot of spells that they can kind of clean up the board afterwards. So I'm really excited about this card. I think it's really cool. I say excited. I'm going to hate it when somebody plays it against me because they're always going to pull your one drop or that one battle cry card that you want because, of course, your opponent's battle cry won't trigger if this comes off it as well. So loads of possibilities with this um, and the previous card, the uh, Scarlet Webweaver. Both of them, I think, will go into a lot of Hunter decks. There's a, a lot of competition for that 6 slot, I think. And then lastly for today, we have Hidden Oasis. This is a 6-mana Druid spell. It's a Choose 1 effect, which is important because it works with Keeper Stiladris and also with the quest. So remember, if you complete the Druid quest, then your Choose 1 cards have both effects combined. And I think that's pretty important because this is Choose 1 Summon a 6-6 six, six Ancient with Taunt or Restore 12 Health. So it's a very defensive card, but a 6-6 six, six with Taunt isn't great for 6 mana, and 6 mana to restore 12 health also isn't great. Um, we've seen some 4 mana cards that restore 12 health. Uh, Greater Healing Potion in Priest, and that wasn't didn't see a lot of play in Priest. Um, Branching Paths was 4 mana, and that could technically restore 12 health by giving you 6 armor twice. And that did see play because of the flexibility. So it just gives you an option, um, an idea of how bad 6 mana restore 12 health is. It's not really something you want to do. Um, Shaman does it with Witch's Brew. They play 3 Witch's Brew to restore 12 health. But that card's so good because of the flexibility of it and just being able to restore it, like 4 here, 4 there, or going for um, 20 health if you actually needed to spend all of your mana. So it's a terrible card on its own, but once you've completed the quest, it's very good because... 
then you could restore 12 health to your face and put a minion on the board which is going to be protecting you even more it synergizes with lucent bark it's everything that kind of druid would need but only if you can summon two at the same time um i think a lucent bark deck will, will run this but they won't want to play the 6-6 six, six ancient on their own they'll want to do it with the choose one effect combined so we'll see um i think it's pretty cool i'm glad that it's not too it, it's kind of one of the cards that gives you a huge downside if you don't trigger something else first and the downside here is a complete loss of tempo in my opinion if the quest isn't any good and no one's playing quest i don't think anyone's going to play this to be honest i think that's really all i can say about this at the moment until we see some more of the choose one cards um but in a lucent bark deck if you're playing it with still address it does actually give you another heal in your hand because still address will put both back in your hand so it does give you another option to restore 12 health and bring your lucent barks back which is important um so maybe in the right deck yes but on its own if you just look at this card on its own it's terrible <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> but uh anyway it'll be interesting to see where druid goes because at the moment um it's very much just kind of token druid at the moment and obviously you wouldn't want to put this in there anyway that's all the cards for today guys i'm getting more and more excited about the expansion so let me know what you think about these cards i think the two hunter ones are very good i don't think hunter particularly needs them because they're a pretty strong class at the moment um, but maybe this will be a, a slightly different or lead to a slightly different way because what I don't really want is those two hunter cards to be huge dire frenzy cards because we've seen a lot of dire frenzy and we've seen a lot of master's call and this kind of they both kind of lean into it so I'm a little bit worried about that but otherwise they are very good cards and they're going to be around longer than dire frenzy will so thank you for watching I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you next time.